in a political season, and political seasons to me are like Christmas. I love them. Um, let's make sure the signal. Yes, good. The signal goes up. Um, I love them. It's it's almost like a holiday, or you could say a holiday occasion. Um, one of the things, though, you're going to see a lot of people looking into the camera, trying to convince you to give them your vote. And some of this is going to be overt and over the top, meaning, you know, I'm trying to do X, Y, Z. When I get into that office, this is going to take place, and by golly, my name is whatever. But you're also going to have this being done in more passive ways, ways that aren't necessarily an argument to your psyche, even though they are an argument to your psyche, just not necessarily made in ways that are overt and over the top. They are passive ways of campaigning. One of these is trying to discern what the public is going to want for a political cycle. Hillary Clinton was massively out of touch with the politics of the political cycle, just like Jeb Bush and many of the other Republicans that were on that stage and the other Democrats, like O'Malley, um, out of touch. What was in touch was a change season. People wanted something fundamentally different than what they were getting in the current political context. This was true when Obama ran. He ran as a change candidate. I mean, for God's sakes, he was black with a Muslim name. And in the second campaign, Donald Trump essentially doing an Obama for the Republican Party, same thing. Clinton was out of touch. The other Republicans were out of touch. What is going to be the main thing or the mantra for this particular campaign season? And you can see many of the candidates, particularly in the party, the Democratic Party, trying to discern what that is with the argument or with the assumption that it is going to be decidedly to the left. Meaning in order to get to a primary campaign, it needs to be decidedly to the left. Sanders was able to essentially beat Clinton um, brutally for somebody who started the campaign with 3% and ended up taking, what, uh, almost half the states. So what you found is that many of the candidates, Booker, Warren, um, Christian Gillibrand, Kamala Harris, have started to try to move to the left to try to get what they consider to be Sanders coming into the race um, to try to edge him out or at the very least blunt some of the arguments that he will make and some of the ways that he will just be. Um, there, there's another catch to this though. Relatability. Now Ocasio-Cortez, when she was doing her race, the mainstream media for the most part ignored Ocasio-Cortez. Now this did not necessarily stop her from campaigning and the way she did it was through independent media and through her own, you could say, social following of sorts. The moment that she got elected, her following spiked. It was a sweetheart message that essentially people loved, but not just people loved. She would do videos of herself cooking, you know, just basic videos and getting massive, massive views. Bernie Sanders has opened up his own channel. And her situation, one of the main things that people love about her is that she comes across as being relatable, you know, trying to, struggling to pay rent. Here she is cooking. But she does this in a way that seems entirely authentic. It seems entirely herself. Sanders, when he ran, it was a similar thing. People looked at him and thought he was above politics. Clinton even was complaining that this guy comes across as if he's above politics. He's a politician. Authenticity, relatability were things that were prized um, in a political space. Because the fact of the matter is there's always a gap between me and the politician. And because there's a gap between me and the politician, the politician has to shape what he believes is that the public is going to want to try to mind that gap, even if that gap is purely just perceptual um, minding. For the fact is, I have no idea who that person is. Uh, but that person has to do the best thing he can to communicate his intentions, even if it's not necessarily true. The politics of trying to feel authentic and relatable. Either you can just be authentic and relatable, or you can try to shape a narrative that makes yourself seem that way. Um, at the exact same time that Bernie Sanders was doing a video on Salvation Farms, rescuing surplus food and providing job training. Because, you know, we throw away, I think if I'm not mistaken, half of our food gets thrown away. I mean, if you have a capitalist enterprise, that enterprise tries to get money. At a certain point, the food may not necessarily be bad, but it's not necessarily good enough for the standpoint of presentation, in which case you may end up using it something else or, in many cases, throwing it away. Sanders doing a video on salvation farming. Awesome. Awesome. At the same time, Beto, in trying to be relatable, 
doing his best to come across as relatable is doing a video on this. He's at a dental appointment. <laughs> He's at a dental appointment. This video, this is so bizarre. It is a weird and strange um, play for authenticity. Somebody somewhere along the way had to have a conversation with Beto. Hey, look, if you want to run for the presidential campaign in 2020, you need to be relatable. So in the same way Ocasio-Cortez was doing her videos where she's dancing, where she's cooking, we want you to do a video for relatability. If she's going to do cooking, we're going to give you a dental appointment, buddy. And you're going to do that dental appointment and you're going to do politics. Now, in trying to make the pitch for authenticity, this is a play um, for you to get you, to get your vote. This is not a play to get your vote in the open sense of give me your vote. This is a play in sense of this is a relatable guy. Look at this guy at a dental appointment. The fact of the matter is I don't want to be relatable at a dental appointment. Um, I just want to get the dental appointment. It's a little bit bizarre and weird that you're sitting there with your mouth over the instruments in your mouth in order to do the video. I'm going to show this. It's short. But I got to be honest, it's kind of gross. Um, and whatever the message is that you're trying to get across by this, kind of missed the point seeing that you're in a dental appointment. He talks to this woman, and this woman has a conversation about being an immigrant. Essentially, her dad was American, her mom was Mexican, and they were able to make it work. We're just normal people, that type of stuff. If, you know, understand the immigrant, that immigrant is just you, um, this type of politics thing. But you could have just talked to her. Like, there is nothing to say that you needed to get your dental appointment while having this conversation. You could have just sat there and talked to her. I am better. I am having this conversation with this person about X, Y, Z. Why are you getting a dental appointment? And why did you feel that it was appropriate for you to get a dental appointment? There is no right and wrong in this. This video is just weird and bizarre. Um, let, let's take a look at the video. He put it on Instagram. He wanted people to see this. I suspect this was his play at relatability and authenticity. Uh, but again, I don't think people are trying, looking for authenticity at a dental appointment. A dental appointment is just a dental appointment. It's not necessarily the most best aspect of their life. Um, but for whatever reason, some political person that Beto probably pays a ton of money believed that this dental appointment was a play for authenticity. This was a misfire, sir. Let's take a look, Bill. I don't want to see it. I don't know what this is and I don't want to see it. Um, but let's try to requeue this up. And come on, come on, come on, come on. There we are. So I'm here at the dentist and an uh, uh so I'm here at the Uh, so, so I'm, I'm here, here at the, at the dentist. dentist. Why do that? Like, look, if you're going to stand there and get a cleaning, though, shouldn't you get a cleaning for a little bit? Um, if you're only having her put it in your mouth and then take it back out. Like, what's the... That's just bizarre. I mean, it's... You, clearly, you're not there. Well, you're just allowing her to do a cleaning for a long period of extended time. So the point of the video is not necessarily the cleaning. The point of the video is for you to get across this, this thing. But the fact that this is only a few seconds, um, it's political grandstanding. That's all. It's a political stunt, and it's a weird one. Let's let's let me finish. And we're going to continue our series on the people of the border. I'm here with Diana, my dental hygienist. Um, Diana's going to tell us a little bit about growing up in El Paso. Hi, I'm Diana. I was actually um, born here in El Paso. My mom is from a small town in Mexico, Flores Magón. This is bizarre. I'm sorry, it's bizarre. You could have just as easily just had a conversation. <laughs> you could have just as easily had a conversation. So, um... It seems that the stream has been going in and out, so I'll upload this. But this is so bizarre. This is so bizarre. Um, 
pee on a man. He wanted to make it look seem I'm just like every other American. Yeah, I know, but it's trying far too hard. It's trying far too hard. I mean, come on. Yeah, he's trying too hard. You can't play nice with establishment if you're trying to, quote unquote, take over. Look, I agree with that. I get a cavity and have it pulled because it's cheaper. I feel you, Pat. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, you get a cavity. It didn't work. Most people from border states go to Mexico for dental work. I did not know that. I didn't know that. And the last thing I want to watch is Ocasio-Cortez cooking. No, I feel you. I don't necessarily want Ocasio-Cortez cooking either. It, that doesn't necessarily move me. But I am not necessarily the typical person who watches politics. Um, you have people who don't pay attention to the political space. And they essentially vote on principle not necessarily on the very specifics that take place uh, with a politician doing one thing or the other. And so from their standpoint, from their context, looking at the person and saying that person seems like an ordinary person or that seems like an average American, um, and you feel a certain relatability with that person, from a politics standpoint, that's great for the politician. Um, the reality of it is, yeah, people cook because people are people. That doesn't necessarily mean the person is gonna look out for you in a political space. But from the person's standpoint who doesn't pay attention to politics, they look at, and to some degree, by feel, um, what they consider is somewhat like them. And if the person is somewhat like them, the things that they do in that office may be also somewhat like them or in their interests. But I don't, I don't look at the person cooking and, and feel that way. But not everybody, again, looks at politics like me. A lot of people looks at it and it's a relation thing. So I feel you. Start yanking Beto's teeth until he supports Medicare for all. <laughs> John Hill, I thought Elizabeth Warren video was weird. I didn't. I didn't think her video was weird. I actually liked her video. Um, give us the dick pic, Beto. <laughs> Man, I won't be voting for either party. I'm over it. Piano Man, I'm there with you on that one. I, I don't... If Sanders runs, Sanders gets my vote. Tulsi Gabbard most likely would get my vote. But beyond that, I'm done. I, I don't... It needs to go beyond this incremental change stuff. And at some point, you get to the point of thinking the change that you need goes beyond the political space. That as long as you're constrained within the political space, you're a manageable factor. Um... As opposed to federal workers are suing Donald Trump. Now, they're suing Donald Trump with this idea to try under the 13th Amendment, saying we are working involuntarily, um, and this is kind of akin to slavery or indentured servitude. But in this case, we are being compelled to work or incentivized to work while simultaneously not getting paid for the work that's being done. And this is one of the most basic functions of government, keep the government on and keep the government running. Yes, that's true to some degree, but at the same token, you're not being forced to work. You can leave that job. You can go on strike. There's all sorts of things that you can do outside of this kind of going through the judicial route to do so. I don't necessarily know if the 13th Amendment applies. It may apply. Who knows? They'll put it up for the judicial part. But if every last one of those workers stopped working, and it stopped working doing so with a certain degree of solidarity, they would shut the country down. The Yellow Vest Movement in France right now are going into the ninth week of protests. They've shut the country down. They're trying to get Macron's head. Macron is throwing everything that he possibly can overboard to keep his government intact. And they're still saying, it's not enough. We're done. We're done. They're done with the political gamesmanship that takes place. These guys are in Washington fucking around. Either they're going after Trump with some Russian nonsense, or Donald Trump is screaming about immigration um, or immigrant crisis that doesn't exist. Both of them are talking out of their ass. And you have a situation where the American public is fed up. It was fed up under Obama that didn't go anywhere um, from the standpoint the energy that was there, it might have got some more, more diffused. In some cases, it went to Trump. In some cases, it went to Sanders. But that energy is still there. The country wants a fundamental change. 
And in the context of a country wanting a fundamental change, in the context of inequality being at its worst since the Great Depression, the President of the United States is given a tax cut and putting trillions of dollars on the backs of the American worker. Um, wages hasn't gone anywhere, but profits have spiked. Like, I guess I'm making the point that there is a reality of, of, of angst and chaos within the country itself. There's a reality of that. It's palpable. The reason why Donald Trump got elected, the reason why Sanders had that energy, coming out of nowhere, the reason he was able to garner that much energy is because there is a feeling in the country that this is wrong. Obama gave 95% of the wealth to the top 1%. That boils down to, what, 95 or 99% of the population fighting over 5% of the spoils and then being shocked as shit that there's chaos and anger um, with what comes out of that. It needs to change. That's my point. And these guys are fucking around in Washington. If you want that change to take place, the fact that they're fucking around in Washington gets across that the change is not going to take place in Washington in the way that this is organized. There is, needs to be a seriousness uh, from the standpoint of the public and a rebuke of what is taking place in our political space. I mean, this stuff is utter nonsense. These guys are fucking around. Like, you have actual issues that are, are addressing us. They're saying you have 12 years to get your house in order from the standpoint of climate. And the Democratic Party, the tepid Green New Deal that Ocasio-Cortez, that doesn't even have necessarily specification for what it is, even that gets gutted down and watered down. You got, there's a seriousness that's completely lacking in our political discourse, in our political space. You would think that the most logical thing in the world, if you're running the government, is to articulate a problem um, that is bothering and that is dealing with the public and come up with legitimate solutions. You may have different ideas on those solutions, but those ideas should be earnest and not necessarily motivated by ideological um, posturing or cash. Or let's say cash motivating that ideological posturing that has nothing to do with solving the issue at hand. So you get something like Obamacare and yeah, a public option would have been better off. Medicare for all would have been better off. Other things would have been better off in, in discerning what is the problem. The problem is health care costs is continuing to go up because the United States has a for-profit health care system. What is the solution to that? Hey, maybe a single-payer option will probably be the best case solution. And you can look around the world and do analysis to come up with how do you provide health care for all of the citizens of your country at a decent cost. We don't do that. Obama takes the radical centrist route of Obamacare, which is essentially a giveaway to the healthcare industry, trying to have this utopian idea that healthcare companies can maximize their profit while human beings still get some kind of um, high quality healthcare to put a decent cross. That was wrong. The utopian idea was utopian. It didn't work. Utopian centrism of sorts. Um, and Trump comes up with another ideological position that completely ignores the fact that the point of healthcare is healthcare and instead comes up with Trump care, which is a shittier version of Obamacare. Neither one of these things deal with the actual option of how do we provide health care for all of the people in this country at a decent cost. Their decisions, their actions, was purely ideological that had nothing to do with the actual issue itself. There's a seriousness that's fundamental lacking in the way we go about our politics. That's my point. That's my point. Um, all right, I'm going to, uh, wait a minute, there was a, this is probably built as well, and I'm not going to miss it, built. Let's see, and I will end it on this one because we've gone off the rails, or at least I have. Um... Come on, 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 come on. Being over <laughs> Be no Rourke. If you don't like what comes out of Be No Rourke's mouth, why would you like why would I like look at it to it? Oh, that's gross. That is gross. My point belt, it was a weird video. 
I'm ready for Hillary Clinton's colonoscopy video just to show how much of an asshole she is. <laughs> oh, that's gross. That's gross. Hillary Clinton is going to do a colonoscopy video. <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh, that's hilarious. All right, I'm going to end this because I suppose the people are tired of looking at better Oryx's mouth. Um, I have a, a slate of shows for today, so I'll be back in a few minutes. In a very few minutes. I'm going to take a look at this video and see if the quality of it is okay and upload the other video. I think that's probably what I'm going to have to start doing. Uploading my original video because my original video is a better quality. So, I'll leave it here. If you guys enjoy the content, please feel free to share, like, subscribe. You can always support the PayPal or Patreon. Um, and I appreciate it, by, that, by the way, guys. Um, I don't necessarily try to do it on every show because I don't want to overly focus on the revenue aspect of the show. But you have no idea. You guys essentially allow me to do this particular show. Sometimes I have problems when I'm figuring out what I want to do from the standpoint of content. Um, and I, it's sometimes you have to go back to this basic thing of, well, what do you like for the standpoint of content? And ultimately, people start watching your show because you're giving them your perspective of the world. Um, but there's always this interplay between audience versus host, and there's no such thing as host in and of himself, if that makes sense. Like, um, I hope that makes sense. That, that sounds a little weird. But I guess my point is, I try to, if it was just me looking at it, what would I choose? And within the context of that, um, what would be something interesting for the audience? And there's always this thing of back and forth between trying to figure out what those things are. But I, I try to look at it as what do I find interesting, what do I find weird, and what do I find bizarre? And just, just do those videos, create a list, and just go from there. But you guys allow me to do this channel, so thank you very much. I appreciate you. All right, guys, I'm going to end this here, and I will be back in a few minutes.